Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're going to open up a box that a viewer sent in. It was a box of reels that I believe they inherited. It uh, may have just been a, a bunch of older reels that uh, just need repair. I've kind of forgotten what Gary told me. But uh, we got a group of reels here that I've been asked to, uh, to tune up and make, uh, make work well again. So let's see what we got, and then we'll get started on one of these uh, during the video. So. Uh, first one up, I believe, is a Damn Quick. Damn Quick is a German reel. It's uh, from the 60s and 70s. This one is the uh, the 550. We're going to go ahead and tune this up and uh, show you uh, how to take that apart and service it. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll do that one. Maybe we'll do that one first. We'll see. Uh, let's see what else we have in here. I talked uh, a little bit at uh, length with Gary, but I don't remember the exact reels we have here. This is a Mitchell. This is the Mitchell uh, 406. This is the high-speed version of the 306. And uh, we'll do this one as well. Now, I don't normally do Mitchells. There's a lot of folks out there that, are, that have quality uh, Mitchell uh, videos on the, uh, on the site. This one's very tight. Uh, we'll go make sure that one works fine. But uh, I like to document the ones that I'm doing for uh, uh, everybody to uh, see how these things work and how they uh, uh, come together and how to service. Now this one's particularly close to my heart. Uh, this is the old uh, Centurer. It's a French reel. This is the reel I, first spinning reel I learned to fish with, the half bail. Uh, French reel. This one's the Centura Pacific. I want to say that this is uh, late 50s, early 60s. I can always remember casting with this piece out and getting it caught. I don't know why, but uh, I seem to remember that. For some reason, I also seem to remember that the one I had was a black case or a green case, but that's okay. We'll uh, take this one apart show you how that one works as well. And then uh, this one looks like an Ocean City. This one is the, uh, yeah, this is an old Ocean City, but it was a store brand for Macy's. And Macy's was uh, in the business of uh, sporting goods store for a while there. It's one of the departments within their store. This one's tight, but uh, this one will be cleaned up and done as well. So let's just make sure those are the reels that I have. They are. And uh, just for fun, let's get started with that uh, damn quick. I forget exactly, Dan is, is Deutsche, and I don't remember the other part, but it means uh, De the, the German Angler's Manufacturing, I believe, is the way that uh, DAM comes out, and Quick is the version. Today you can still find models of Quick. I don't, uh, don't know or don't remember who actually controls that brand today, but uh, nonetheless it is out there. This one, uh, this one's got some noticeable, probably missing the uh, the grease kind of noises to it. It's kind of a grind. So let's go ahead and take this apart. You can hear it, but you can also hear there's a lot of metallic going on in there. Let's uh, let's take the spool off. <clears throat> You'll notice that I'm wearing a protective glove and that I use a parts tray for a lot of the, uh, the work that I do. Uh, next up, this one's always interesting. Uh, in order to get to the main gear, you need to knock the pin out of the handle here. And uh, to do that, probably going to wind up off camera, but you get a small punch, like a nail punch. That's going to sit on top of this pin here. You're going to push that pin through and that's going to remove the handle and enable you to get the main gear out of the assembly. So I'm just going to go off camera for a moment. I'm just What I'm doing is I'm going to put it in a bench vise so that this just spans the whole of the bench vise so that I can knock down on that. That'll be the noise you're hearing in the background there. And I use a, a dead blow hammer for that. I don't like to put metal on metal. So I'll use the... Uh, plastic side and you can see how that uh, roll pin then is going to slide out and then if you can't get it off you probably need to pull the balance of that with a with the pliers 
be careful with the pliers. Don't go crazy. You don't want to pull it out of round or anything. You just want to put enough tension on there that you can get it out. And that's, that's your roll pin. And once you do that, you can pull the handle off. And then the rest of this is going to come out pretty good. You just take your, your notes along the way here. Uh, take pictures uh, if you need to. But uh, I, I recommend it. Take the pictures. That way you can know exactly the sequence that these came out in. So we had a light shim. Then we have a, a little bit uh, heavier washer. And we have the screw. Okay, so now we're kind of ready for the disassembly of this piece then. The disassembly, this case has three screws that come on both sides holding the gearing in. They're flat bladed screwdriver uh, driver bits. And if this was corroded, since this is an older reel, what you would want to do here is you would want to spray this down with a penetrating oil. This is just a house brand of uh, Ace. It's a uh, lubricant and penetrating oil. Uh, this one doesn't appear to be in that kind of a need, but we'll find out. Don't wrench these screws with all your might. If, you, if they're not coming out, you don't want to break them off. So hit them with some penetrating oil, step back, go get a cup of coffee or something, and then come back to them. So. There's, uh, there's a lot of history here in these reels. Uh, like I mentioned, the one is kind of what I learned to fish on there, that Centurer. The, uh, there's more history. My uncle uh, used to use these damn quicks and swear by them. Um, he was an avid surf fisher in the, uh, the Jersey beaches, and uh, he landed a lot of fish. Now, the one that he had, he used to use was, like, I don't know why I remember it, but I do. It was the Super. And uh, it was a big surf fishing reel like this one is. And I would say this one's comparable to, in size, it's comparable to the Mitchell 302. And probably competed against them at that point. Three of these off. Now remember, as you're doing this, what side these are on. These are reversible, I believe. In the back here now we have a, um, an E-clip. You want to get that off. So most of the time you can just pry these off. You don't need any special tool. I'm just using a small micro screwdriver for that to pull the clip off here. You can see that E-clip. And again, just like, uh, like everything else we're talking about here, be very careful with these parts. You lose these parts on an older reel. They're going to be hard to replace. And I'll just pull this up. There's a washer that goes there, and we should be able to remove that and pull the, the gear out. And we should be able to pull the side plate off as well. So if you look inside now, you're going to see that this is a very common setup here. It's got a, um, uh, a, a main pinion gear that's very much like the spin fisher, and it's got the same kind of travel for the uh, crosswind on the up and down block. So I had to stop my camera for a minute. It was absolutely bothering me what uh, DAM -A stands for. My German is terrible, but it's Deutsche Angelrate Manufacturer, and it means German Fishing Tackle Manufacturer. And the uh, the history of it is that this has been around a long time. This was this company was founded in 1875. And like I said, the brand still to some extent is around today. I don't know if it's changed hands. I'm assuming it's changed hands over time. Okay, we can pick this back up. So here's our main gear assembly. We still have to remove the shaft uh, from the casing so that we can clean all of that up and lubricate it. And just like it was with the handle, the, uh, the trick here is that there's a pin inside here. I also uh, have a smaller uh, kind of needle is part of an old awl. Uh, this is an awl. It's a carpeting, carpenter, carpenter's uh, tool or a leather making tool. This one uh, just fell off of something that was screwed into it and it served me for years. Well there's a little pin in here just like there was a pin in the handle and you're going to have to knock that pin out. There we go. 
don't lose it, <laughs> is that roll pin inside this one, and that roll pin is holding the gear to the inside handle plate. So I'm just going to put that into my case as well, and I don't want to confuse the two pins, so I'm just going to put it inside that, uh, that little triangular piece to remind me that it belongs with that. Now we should be able to pull the gear off, nice. We should be able to push the shaft out. And now we can clean all of this up and get this set for, uh, for a reinstall. As you can tell, the reel is a basic reel on the bottom. It just has the, uh, the pinion gear, the uh, cross wind block, and the, uh, the axle shaft that goes up and down on it. So it's a pretty easy, pretty straightforward uh, piece to work on in that regard. So we have a um, an axle shaft here that's attached by the cross wind block. I want to take that off. There's two screws here. But the one that's holding the axle shaft in is the lower one. And again, if you find any tension on these screws at all, please stop. Use the penetrating oil. Take a break. Uh, you, you just can't afford to break any of these parts with an old reel. Okay. Here we go, that's out. We should be able to pull the axle shaft up, which we just did. You can see there's a whole bunch of old grease and gunk on there. We'll go clean that in a moment. We're going to go clean all of this. This is our, uh, our gear. And what I like to do with this one is I like to put that screw right back in there, just so I don't lose that. And now we can continue with what we were doing on the, on the base here. And, uh, well, we might as well <clears throat> take one more step here. The uh, the rotor assembly is held on by the uh, cap nut, and uh, we'll want to take that nut off as well. So, I don't have a deep enough one. We're going to shut the, the video off here. I'm going to go get a 14 millimeter um, socket. Okay, back with the right tool, and that's just a, an indication that you should always use the right tools. Don't force anything. I noticed it was too deep on the thing uh, for my conventional wrench. You don't want to rip up the corners of these nuts. Go for the right tool, which in this case is a socket. This should be a uh, counterclockwise traditional. Yep, it is. And then I like to, as soon as I break the nut, if I can take it off by hand, I prefer to do that. We have the nut, we have a shim washer, and we have a, a hole tight uh, washer that's locked into the spool, and that gives us access to the bottom, which is nice and clean. I'm going to take these pieces and put them right in the order in there and nest them and uh, put them off to the side here. Now, I don't need to put that into my parts bucket, but I just want to make sure this was all clean in here, which it is. And uh, if we wanted to, we could pull this. But there's no need to. There's a um, <clears throat> there's a little clip in here. You would use a tool like this that uh, has the um, the ability to go pull a clip ring. One point would sit in each. And then you would remove it like that. And then you can pull out the rest of the assembly. We're not going to do that, but I just wanted to show you how that gets done. And then you would just reassemble it as such. Okay, this, uh, this top is fine. Let's pay attention to cleaning this up then. We're going to just uh, we're going to start with just a general cleaning. I'm going to use a little bit of that penetrating oil just to loosen the grease a little bit. I've had uh, lots of folks tell me different ways to to kind of clean some of this stuff up, including uh, carburetor cleaner, brake fluid cleaner, uh, all kinds of automotive things. Uh, most of the time it really just comes down to elbow grease and uh, just getting some kind of light oil or something just to, to get rid of the, uh, the overall uh, buildup. So we're going to go do that. That's cleaned nicely. They can you also, you've seen me in other videos, use uh, ultrasonic cleaners and the like. Uh, you can do that if you like too. 
Okay, I'm just going to use a, a, a stiff brush. You could use a, a toothbrush if you don't have one of these. You don't even need a wire brush. But I'm just taking out the little um, contaminants that are inside those gear teeth. And then I'm using cotton swabs to clean out the, the, geese, the grease that has just gotten caught in the, inside the tracks there. All right, the main gear is good. I want to go back to that roll pin now. I'm just going to start that roll pin in the hole here because it's very difficult to start that inside <clears throat> when you go back to reinstall. Okay, and then when we get this uh, reassembled with here, we're going to make sure that we line everything up and tap that in the rest of the way. All right, just continuing with doing the laundry here. This is pretty easy. This has been clean to start with. I think if there's anything to be said about what's uh, what's going on with this reel, it's just the lack of lubrication over time. I'm just going to clean the channels out of the, the pinion gear then. I'm just going to use that same little pick that I have just to get some of the, the grease out of the bottom of this. There's not a lot of grease in here, which is why I didn't pull the, the main gear. But just to take care of that little bit. As long as you have the reel open, you might as well do it all, and do it all properly. There's just a little bit of buildup of the old grease below. There you go. All right, so that's clean. This is clean. Um, let's take that shaft. The shaft has got some old oil and the like on there. Let's do it first with the cloth. Let's see if there is anything other than tarnish, which it really isn't. You could, if you, if you were concerned, you could take some steel wool. Just kind of give it that last bit of polish there. These are really quality made reels. You won't find materials like this in, uh, in today's reels. Okay, once you have that done then, you can uh, use a little bit of blue grease on the shaft. Here's the hole where that pin is going to go through for the main gear. I use this as a tool as well, as a protective. Once you put that in, you can just kind of slide it around, uh, get it done properly in terms of spreading it. Just a little bit more in terms of cleaning the outside of this. We can insert this then. And this is the only part where it's a little bit tricky. You come in and you need to line up the uh, the pin with the uh, with the hole. Probably push that through too much. I did. What I like to do is I think the pin just protruding a little bit. So then, of course, you got to back it out if it's too much, which, of course, it is. If you can get that little stub just out enough, it'll give you the set for the getting it in the hole without uh, too much difficulty there. That should be it. No, it's still short. Let's just start over. Put the pin in. So you put the pin in here. And we're just going to have to fly a little bit blind on this one. Okay, then you're going to have the pin here, and you're going to have to tap that in. So typically what I like to do is use a bigger version of the punches, one that's, that would not go through a wider bottom. Line that, sit that on the top of the pin. Okay. 
you just tap it down as you're seeing here until you're flush and then you can look on both sides if one side's proud you want to just make sure you tap it back in this case I just I think I just knocked grease through but I don't believe I knocked the pin through nope we're good and just give it a give it a test and that's it that's your main gear assembly so next up then is just kind of uh, reverting back clean the pieces that we need to clean I'm just going to spray this down a little bit clean that up again I show you how to take that clip off there if you needed to take the clip off just uh, going to grab the this is a bushing it's not a bearing up top here so you can just simply put some oil on that it's amazing how these things have survived the years that they have and we're going to put blue grease onto the pinion gear again I'm going to use my gloved hand now I'm going to run that pinion gear with the grease on it just to get it in the channels same over here. We're going to put a little bit of grease into the, the teeth of the main gear. Run that around a little bit. And then this can get reinstalled. So to reinstall then we're going to remember that we put this side plate on. And then the main gear came in. And it's important to note the orientation on the reverse uh, lockout, the anti-reverse. Put that on, make sure you're turning freely. And we can come back on this side again and we can do... Oh, or I did that. My bad. So we're going to take this off. Now I'm going to pull that uh, main pinion gear. You need a uh, split ring pliers, or I'm not sure exactly what the pliers is called, but you need the one that enables you to pull these retaining clips out. They have two points on the end of it. If you pull tight, you can remove that ring. You can see how the two points on the pliers sit in the two holes of the ring. Once you do that, then you can remove the, there's a shim washer here, and there's another washer underneath it, and then there's our ball bearing. So we should be able to pull that whole assembly out at this point to give this a good cleaning. Put those two into my parts bucket so I don't lose those. Just removing the shim washer now. removing the shim washer now and you should be able to push this bearing off. This is our post so let's make sure that we can clean this up. I like to wipe that down and we can get it to bearing. Let's clear all these channels out and I'm using just running a fingernail through the channel and trying to pull the grease up with the, uh, the rag use the paper towel and again these parts are just incredible versus what you see on today's reels this, I believe this is stainless and then for a general cleanup go back to that hard bristle brush just pull the rest of it out and then on the bearing we've got some really old grease in there I don't know if that's what's causing some of this let's just hit that on both sides I like to hold the one side again with the, uh, the towel see how much of this we can get out now you could bathe this in uh, something like a master blaster or something get all that uh, that old grease out but I think for the most part oh, I got some dirt in there 
most part just continuing to just work it with the penetrating oil, getting the rag to flood it out, kind of wash it out. There we go. We're pretty good with that now. And then we want to repack that. So we'll repack that with the blue grease. Now normally I oil burrings, but in this case, these are the more free flowing burrings. We're just going to want to make sure that we get a nice packing of that, much like you would do an automobile uh, burring. Just kind of pack it in there. These are not the smaller ones for sure. There we go. I'm good to sit with that. While we're at it, we'll go put some some of the excess lube that was on there onto the shaft. We should be able to press the shaft back on now. There we go. Bearing's back on. That little shim that came off is back on. And that's your upper service of the bearing and the pinging gear. You want to just make sure that the channel in here is clear. It is. <clears throat> just wipe it down for the purpose of showing you. And then we'll show you how to reinstall that. We'll just grab this uh, pin in here. We'll put a little bit on the bottom here where it's going to go into the other um, uh, holder. And that's just a little copper bushing on the bottom here. Also going to put the blue grease into the main gear where we cleaned it up. Or the main spiral shaft of the uh, pinion gear. Those of you that watch my videos know I don't get the terms right on the pieces and parts all the time. My bad. I'll admit it right up front. Okay, let's go back then. We remember the sequence on this then. We had a kind of a wavy washer that was next. That went over that. And we had a flat washer. You gotta make sure these are seated because when you go for that clip, there's no uh, no room in there. All right, again, back. You need that pliers. I've seen people do it with uh, sort of like metal picks and that. It's very difficult. If you're going to do this much, and I just happen to be lucky. This is an automotive tool that I happen to have. I just got lucky with this one. All right, set it in there as close as you can. Pull in, and you should be able to get it into the slot. And Sure, it's on both sides of the slot there. I think I just need a little bit of a push on that one side. Hmm. I don't have the hand strength that I wish I had sometimes. There we go. Now. All right, so that's back to where it was. And we're going to have a little bit of a noisemaker. That's kind of normal, I think. All right, let's go back to the, picking up the, uh, the the balance of this then. Put the rotor on next. The rotor was nice and clean. There's nothing to do here. Make sure that the keyway with that little slot sits on the spool with that little slot. Just aligning the two, it's a rectangular hole. There we go. That's set. And we have the shim washer. And sometimes you, you'll see it's a little proud. You have to push up sometimes on this pinion gear. In order to get the clearance that you need, and yeah, we're fine now. And we got the nut. Remember, we know that the nut goes on the traditional right side clockwise turn. And then we want to set our set our socket, plug it up, give it a turn. Working nicely. Thank you very much. 
while I have the rotor up here, I'm going to put a little bit of oil. You don't need to oil these to speak of uh, because the uh, there's only a spring under here. The spring by its nature doesn't need much, uh, but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of oil in there. And just work it to uh, make sure that it's all set right. Okay, we're good there. So, up top is done. Clean off the shaft. We had some of that uh, old grease on there. Again, we can do the same thing that we did with the um, the drive gear. Just take some steel wall. If you think that there's some residual there, clean that off. Again, a nice, beautiful uh, shaft there. Put some of the blue grease on. Now you don't want to just put it in like that, it's only going to accumulate on the top and over time probably will cause issues with that. So just get it cleaned up, reinsert, we're back to the cross wind. There's nothing to do there from a, a maintenance standpoint, it's only a block of metal. So we can bring the cross wind in. I have the uh, the screw was too proud there. That's one of the problems you store it that way. Then you got to go back and get the uh, take the screw out. There we go. And then we can screw that down. This is a visual. There's no easy way to, to line this one up. And just tighten that down. <clears throat> As you can tell, we're coming a long way now in terms of almost uh, finishing this off here. Now we can insert the main gear. Oops, the main gear, we won't put the side plate cover back on, that would help. Main gear, remember where your clicker orientation is. Crosswind block over the main gear stud. Bring this all back up again. Line that up. Side plate cover. Side plate cover's got the screw acceptors on it. Oops, before we do that. So that's the beauty of the, um, the point spin. Here's your two pieces that go to that. Is the washer that sits on top of the crosswind block, and then there's the little E clip or C clip goes on top of the stud. Sometimes you need more than one hand here. So several sets of fingers. I use a little needle nose plier to put those on. Sometimes you can do it by hand. Most, most of the time. You know. Try that again. And actually this one you can do by hand. There you go. Alright, so we're back in on that. And then I like to put just a little bit of blue grease into that channel there. We can give it a turn, make sure that everything is operating fine. Which it is. Now we can close it back up. I 
and align the holes. <coughs> Take your long screws. And don't tighten these all the way down until you have at least two in. Because you'll, you can be offline and if you tighten it down you won't get the second one started. Second one here. One more. And we'll just be back to the handle. Okay, we have that all set up now. Now we can tighten them all down. So you've seen the quality in this reel. It's incredible for the, uh, the product. You mentioned several times you, you, you just won't see stuff like this today. Just drop my glove under there. There you go. Give it a spin. Okay. Next up is the handle tightening screw. This one you have to hand screw in because you you don't want to strip the, the threads on this one. Make sure you got it right. I don't have it right yet. There we go. Push that one all the way down. Then we had the slotted screw or a slotted washer. Then we had the shim washer. Now we can put the handle in. Again, just like we did with the other one, I want to start that roll pin in the handle first. Again, this is a dead blow hammer. Don't use metal on metal. Line that up with the all in the handle. We gotta play with it a little bit. There you go, I think we have it now. Okay, got the handle on. Still got a little bit of noise. I think the noise, and I'm going to attribute that noise to age now, but uh, from a from an operations perspective, this is now right. Got the two shim washers for the the top side. We can go ahead and do the. Check the drags out while we're at it. Pull a C-clip on top here. Pull these off. Incredibly, for the age of the reel, this drag system seems to be in good condition. They're clean. Now there's a slot in here, so this is probably best done by putting the spool back onto the shaft. Because the second one has a slot on it, which needs to go into that shaft that's going to hold it, keep it from rotating. These alternate hard washers and metal washers. Next one up is an eared washer. So you want to make sure that you put that ear in and then hold that to the indentation in the spool. Last of the hard washers. Clean up the top side grease on this particular piece of metal. Again, you can use your steel wall. 
This is cosmetic at this point. That doesn't affect the operation of the reel, but let's get it off. And this one's also slotted. So you want to make sure you get that in the top slot. And then we can go put that clip back on. It's going to go off camera for a moment just because I need the leverage here. But that's how you put the last piece in. Make sure it's set in the ridge. Grab the drag knob tensioner. And there we go. So there it is. There's the repair. Well, it's, it's more quiet. Make sure that uh, your anti reverse is operating and that your override is operating. Now, if you can back, back pedal this one, if you wanted to switch the operation of this, you could. With this, you can just move it to the other side, make it left hand, right hand. But in this case, we're good. So that's it. That's the, the uh, the damn quick 550 salt water reel and uh, ready to go on a shelf or go back into uh, service. I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. If you like it, please subscribe. If you want to see more, please stay tuned as I post frequently. I uh, appreciate you viewing.